Thanks to Brilliant for supporting this SciShow video. Because you watch SciShow, Brilliant is offering the first 200 people to sign up, a 30-day free trial, and 20% off an annual premium Brilliant subscription at brilliant.org slash scishow. Imagine if nobody had eyes. And I don't mean people are born blind. I mean, vision as a concept hasn't happened to our species yet. And then one day, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, bam. A kid is born who has eyes, who can see. So where did these whole entire eyes suddenly come from? It can't be a natural selection thing because there weren't like sort of, but not yet eyes for it to act on. There were no eyes and no vision at all. And yet there he is, the kid with the eyes. And no, this isn't the next dystopian teen chosen one TV show. It's a real question that's given scientists headaches all the way back to Darwin. And now we may finally have an answer but one that causes even more headaches. In order for evolution to act, it needs something to act on. Natural selection acts on what's already there. So a fin becomes a leg and later a wing. That means the evolution of something totally new and innovative is pretty rare. And there are two competing ideas about how that happens. One is that these traits develop gradually in tiny little increments over long periods of time. The other is that they're caused by sudden massive changes like a major mutation that gives an organism a major advantage. So let's use our eye example to take a look at this. A working eye that allows us to see and interpret the world involves a lot of parts evolving and working together in tandem. Eyes don't just detect light. Human eyes detect color and distance and have muscles to focus and shift their field of view. In the gradual version, you'd expect those to show up slowly and one at a time, but there's actually a bit of a problem. Some of the little changes required to make the final eye work might not be immediately beneficial, and that means natural selection probably wouldn't do anything with them one way or the other. The other option is that there were one or more big sudden mutations that resulted in immediate huge changes. Changes that were massively beneficial and so massively favored that all of a sudden an eye sprung into existence fully formed. In this version, evolution of these traits looks like giant leaps followed by periods, as opposed to a steady progress. But this also seems kind of unlikely because, well, how did a sudden mutation come up with a whole working eye? Scientists have wondered about how these so-called key innovations develop for more than a century. And in January 2024, two papers published in the journal Science might have finally given us the tools to solve that mystery. The first study looked at carnivorous plants called pitcher plants, some species of which have a pretty diabolical method for trapping prey. If an ant is chilling on the lid of a pitcher plant leaf when the plant gets hit with a drop of water, that drop turns the lid into a catapult that launches the ant directly into the cup-shaped leaves that trap the ants in a pool of fluid. In order for this to work, three different traits had to evolve. One is that lid that catapults the insects into the leaf cup. The second is a just right slippery texture that allows ants to hang on to the lid generally, but be dislodged when water hits. And then there's the springboard catapulting mechanism itself. Importantly, none of these traits are enough to catch an ant on their own or even in pairs. It takes all three of them to make that dinner happen. So it would kind of make sense that all three of these traits co-evolved to work together. But according to an international research team, that's not what happened. Happened. Instead, it appears that each of the three traits developed mostly or completely independently from the other two. Basically, before this innovation, these species of pitcher plants had a ton of variation in different traits. Some might have had horizontal lids, some were slipperier than others, and some had lids that springboarded. In fact, that's exactly the case with some related species. And when the researchers compared between these other species, they didn't find correlations between the three traits. They also found that in species without springboard trapping, these traits looked very very different than they do in our flinging flora friends. You'd expect that if traits were actively evolving towards springboard trapping, they'd be getting closer and closer to what we need for catapulting. So for example, even in the species that didn't springboard or have completely horizontal lids, their lids would be close to flat but they're not. Taken together, these findings suggest that at some point, all three of these traits just happened to appear together at the same time, and only after that 
did they maybe start evolving together, driven by natural selection? So basically, a plant appeared that just randomly happened to have all of the parts needed for springboard trapping. The innovation happened when those parts came together, but it was already in the works. And what's really wild is that this happened in two different species of pitcher plants. The two species are separated by over 4,000 kilometers of ocean, and the species that are evolutionarily in between them don't use springboard trapping. If I had a nickel for every time pitcher plants evolved a springboard trap, well, I'd have 10 cents, which isn't that much money these days, but it is weird that it happened twice. Around the same time as the carnivorous pitcher plant study, a separate group of researchers in Europe were studying a different trait, this one in an animal. Most snails lay eggs, but one species of marine snails give birth to live snail babies. The research team looked at the genomes of the live birthers and their closest relatives, hoping to find the parts of the genome that coded for live birth. And they found that there were several different gene locations associated associated with the method of giving birth. They also found that those locations didn't change at the same rate as the rest of the genome, which tends to be a sign that natural selection is keeping them that way. The research suggests that all of the genes associated with birthing live babies came together slowly over about 100,000 years. It's unclear at what point in that process the reproductive method actually switched over, but the genetic evolution has been in the works for a long time. And just like the pitcher plant springboard trapping, this may have evolved in snails more than once. If I had a nickel for every time in this video a key innovation occurred multiple times independently, well, I'd also have 10 cents. And if I had a nickel for every time this script called for an if I had a nickel joke, I'd also have 10 cents. Or 15, I guess. So here are two cases where a fundamental, species-altering complex trait didn't suddenly appear due to a big genetic mutation. Instead, the pitcher plants had traits that gradually evolved separately and then got really lucky to come together in the right way. And in the snails, the necessary versions of the right genes for live birth were slowly collecting over time. And natural selection was doing that, though we don't know exactly what those genes do, so we can't say exactly why. Plus, this appears to have happened more than once in both of these species. So as far as arguments go, it's two points for gradualism and zero for big evolutionary leaps. Neither study finds a single giant leap, and both show how the new innovation had the groundwork laid for it ahead of time. Now, while most of us don't catapult insects into slippery cups on the regular, humans do have an incredible number of these types of traits. So learning more about them in other species might give us some insight on how we came to be able to do all the things that we do. But we still don't know how these genes got selected for, or exactly what kind of genetic changes happened that resulted in the new traits. Because if the genes hadn't manifested as traits that were any different from others, what was natural selection even acting on? How did natural selection favor the genes that the kid with the eyes got if there weren't any eyes? Hopefully these answers, like eyes, will come with time. But in the meantime, you can wonder what other new traits may be collecting just under the surface. This SciShow video is supported by Brilliant, the interactive online learning platform with thousands of lessons in science, computer science, and math. And sure, you can't build your own body, putting eyes all over the place willy-nilly, but you can build code to accomplish different kinds of complex tasks. And Brilliant has a course to help you do that. It's called Thinking in Code, and it'll have you problem-solving like a programmer in just 11 lessons. You'll learn about loops, conditional statements, variables, and all that programming stuff. And when you finish up with the basics, Brilliant has more courses to take your coding skills to the next level. So to get started, go to brilliant.org slash scishow, or the link in the description down below. That link will also give the first 200 people who sign up 20% off an annual premium Brilliant subscription, and you'll get your first 30 days for free. And thanks for watching this SciShow video.